Okay. Okay, we're recording. I'm going to go get started. Welcome, everybody. Um, thank you very much for joining this morning. I know it's been a long time since we've kind of met virtually, and I apologize for that. As I put out in the letter that was shared, I think it was August 11th, there really has not been a lot of new information. So I, I really did not want to hold webinars over the summer unless I had something new to share or, or had more information for you that really could try to clarify things. And that really has not come over the summer and it is starting to come in now over the last um, week or so. So just to kind of remind you how this works, this the format here is a webinar. Again, I am sorry. I know people can't speak in a webinar, but I mean, we're anticipating at least 100 or so participants and that can get a little confusing. So if you do have questions, if you put them in the Q&A section, okay, not the chat, but the Q&A section, if you have any questions, I'm going to do my best. The topics that I'm discussing are things that have been asked um, of, of me by parents over the last, you know, few months. So I'm just trying to address the topics I've discussed with parents either outside at Summer Rising or through emails or just, you know, informal conversations. And if there's something that I have not addressed at the end, you can certainly feel free to ask. When I go through the questions at the end, if I've already answered the question, I'm not going to repeat things. I'm just going to kind of go through it. And if when we're done, if there's something you're still not sure about, you can feel free to email Ms. Agronsoni, uh, any of the assistant principals, or you can always email me as well. Okay. Before we get started, I just want to quickly introduce Ms. Zeka. Uh, she is the new assistant principal that has joined us as of Monday, actually, officially. So welcome, Ms. Zeka. Ms. Zeka joins us from PSIS 102, where she was a math teacher and came uh, very highly recommended by Ms. Weinstein, who's the principal of 102. And we actually put her through a pretty rigorous vetting process with a couple levels of interviews with Ms. Snell and Ms. Delio and myself. She visited one day during Summer Rising, and we feel very, very good about Ms. Zeka. We think she can be a great addition to the team. So please introduce yourself, say hello, you know, give her some time to get acclimated. She's still obviously got a lot to learn about the school, but we're very confident she's going to do a great job. So just a few reminders about the upcoming school year. First, the contact protocol, okay? I, I'll share this at PTA meetings. Well, it's, it's on the website. If you have questions throughout the school year, you're, I think you should all know by now, you're more than welcome to come directly to me, okay? And I'm happy to, to answer parent questions, concerns, just even speak to you. The one thing I just want to remind everyone is that most of the time, specific, specifically for issues dealing with students, the teacher's going to have the best answer for you, okay? Now, if it's something you're not comfortable discussing with the teacher, then you do bring it to an administrator, okay? But I, I will always encourage all parents, please start with the teacher, okay? If, um, if it deals with health or something, you obviously have Nurse Cindy. If you're not sure where to go, you can start with Ms. Agronsoni, and she can point you in the right direction. You can call the office. The ladies in the office can point you in the right direction. Assistant principals are, are here for you as well. Ms. Snell will be handling grades K to 2. Ms. Zeka will be handling grades 3 to 5. And Ms. Delio, grades 6 to 8. Okay, uh, and then obviously you, you can feel free to come to me. And, and I don't want you to think, I've said this before, this is not kind of me creating a firewall between me and parents. Um, but a lot of times it can be resolved very quickly by just discussing it, you know, issues with the teacher. Because if you come to me, what I usually have to do is go to the teacher, find out what's going on, then get back to you. So try to follow the contact protocol where you can. And if you're not able to, you know, let us know. We're, we're, we are here for you. I just want to make sure everyone's clear on that. I want to thank all of our future 49ers who came in yesterday for kindergarten orientation. It was very nice to stand in front of a group of parents and students in person. It was something I didn't really hit me until we started yesterday, but we have not done that for over a year and a half. And it was, kindergartners were very excited and parents seemed excited. And I, I want to apologize again. I had to cut out right after I kind of gave my spiel because there was a meeting called by the superintendent uh, the night before, but it was really great to see everyone. I want to thank all the kindergarten families and ask our current families, you know, to help them as well as they continue to get acclimated. Now let's get into the, the important thing. Well, that was all important. Let's get into stuff that everyone wants to know about. First day of school is September 13th, 2021. That's a week from Monday. We are coming back for in a full return, five-day-a-week instruction for all students, okay? That is, it's, it's non-negotiable. There's been nothing, no talk at all of a delayed opening. There's been no talk at all of cohorts, there's the, you know, the goal is to run things as close to normal as possible. So I know I'm running into parents actually in the neighborhood last week or so, and some are still asking, are we coming back? The answer is yes. Okay. I've received no indication of anything 
short of a full reopening on September 13th. Now, there will be some adjustments. And, you know, when I say we run things as close to normal as possible, that's, that's what we're going to do. But there are going to things that, you know, the circumstances are going to dictate that we have to do. Now, I'm going to address these first few items. And I, I, what I don't want to do here today is I, the purpose of this meeting is not to kind of debate whether or not we agree with these things. Okay, there are certain things that are going to take place this year that I have zero control over. This is just the way it is. These are directives. You know, I get my guidance from the Department of Ed and from the city, and I, I don't have any control over certain things at the school level. And I, the biggest ones that I could think of, and there will probably be more as we move through the school year, but, but the first A through E here. School reopening is happening, and there, right now, positivity rate is not considered. It's not a metric that is considered by the city to open or close schools. So, if the you know that could change, but a parent, uh, a couple of parents asked, you know, the positivity rate's over three percent. Why are we reopening? That that rate went out the window, truthfully, last year at some point. So that's not a consideration that the city's using as to whether or not to open or close schools. We're wearing masks. Okay, students, staff, everyone's wearing masks. Anyone that comes in the building must be in a mask. There is no remote platform. That's just the children are coming to school to learn in person, you know, barring a, a shutdown throughout the year due to uh, quarantine or things like that. But there is no remote option for families. Vaccination requirements, they are in place for all DOE staff. Right now, there is no COVID vaccine mandate for children 12 and over. Whether or not that will happen, I, I don't know. But that's not in place right now. But it is in place for all DOE staff. And the it, you know, as a kind of side note to that, the regular vaccination requirements that are normally in place, those you know, continue to be so. And I you know, have this conversation with parents every year. Those are state rules. I have no control at all over that. So you know, please make sure that you're up to date on that. That was shared out on Instagram. It's on the website, the school's website. It's on the DOE's website. There is no wiggle room there. And please, you know, it does get to a point where we get those vaccination notices from the city health department that's saying, you know, these students are not up to date, you need to, they should be excluded. And by excluded, they mean we are, you know, we are not allowed to provide them instruction in the building if they're not up to date on their vaccines. In some cases, if I don't comply with that, the principal of the school can be fined personally. And I'm, you know, I, I love all your kids and I want them all here, but I'm, I, I can't take a fine because of vaccination stuff. So, if you have concerns about that, I do apologize, but there's really not, I have no control outside of that. Uh, school closure and quarantine rules. If that happens, those are those decisions are made well above the school level. Okay, I have no control over that. So if there is a case or, or, or a particular class needs to quarantine, you know, I, even last year, co parents would ask, you know, why is the school still open? I understand there were this many cases or things of that nature. We don't make those decisions at the school level. There were several times over the last 20 months that I've you know, I actually advocated to either open or even remain closed for an extra day, given circumstances. My my advocacy was not taken into consideration. So if those things happen, those are decisions that are made above my level, and I have no control over that, okay? Now, health and safety protocols that will be in place for the 2020 and 21 school year in order to keep everyone as safe as possible, okay? The first is we will continue with the daily health screening. Parents, it's most convenient if you could please try to do this at home uh, on the on the computer, you know, just bring your phone with your child and have it have the you know the, the notice there that they're cleared. Or if you use the hard copy, sorry, if you use the hard copy, please have that done at home because if that's it, done in front of us, we have to do a temperature check. And remember, we're you know last year on any given day we had 250, probably about 250 students in the building. We're in a full reopening, so we're going to be up to 1150, you know, between 1150 and 1200 most likely. And entry will take quite a while if we have to spend a lot of time doing temperature checks and things like that. So if you could please have those forms filled out, um, send them with your child if they come to school alone, or if you bring your child, have them with you so that we can just grab them quick and uh, move on. Please don't put the child's name on it, okay? It's just easier if you don't, because then we got to shred it. And just quite frankly, it's a little more work. Uh, but the paperless is the way to go. If, if you can do that, that would be best. You can screenshot it. You can do it on your phone, screenshot it. You can take a picture of the health screening at home and, and just show me the picture, you know, each day. I don't really care how it's done, but, you know, we just got, please come in with that if you could. Uh, again, as I said, the other, another step is that vaccinations are mandated for all school staff. Okay, this is anyone that works in a school building. 
The one exception right now that I believe the city's still working out with one of the unions is bus drivers. That has, again, nothing I can do about that, but anyone working in a school building must have must be vaccinated. Universal masking uh, for everyone. We will continue to um, remind students to frequently wash their hands. There's copious amounts of hand sanitizer all over the building, uh, things of that nature. Custodial staff will be throughout the day doing, you know, point, what do they call it, uh, touch point cleaning, you know, wiping things down throughout the day. Uh, students will remain in the classroom. Okay, teachers are going to move in most cases. A couple exceptions, we will use the gym again, although there will be fewer classes in there. It will be only two classes at a time uh, in most cases, unless it's a smaller class. So the only time students will really be moving is for PE and for, for meals in some cases. Uh, but we're going to minimize movement throughout the school. Three feet social distancing will be in place where possible. Okay, that is the guidance from the chancellor. That's what's in the uh, family facing health and safety guidance. We have shifted classrooms. We're, we're arranging desks. We're, if we see a larger class, we're trying to put them in a larger room. Anywhere we are able to make sure that we maintain three feet of social distance in the classroom, we're doing that. Anywhere we cannot, the rooms will be outfitted with extra air purifiers, okay? The goal here is to make sure that we don't have to open extra classes, okay? If we really, you know, if, if we really wanted to 100% make sure that everyone was always at three feet social distancing, it would mean requiring extra sections on a grade, and it would mean having substitute teachers teach those classes, and we're also not receiving any funding for those additional classes. So it would really hit our budget very hard. We would have teachers that were strong subs, that's not saying they get substitute teachers, but not certified content teachers uh, teaching children. And, and I don't think that's instructionally sound. So, you know, our goal is all our students taught by our teachers. Our class sizes could go up to normal class size. There's, you know, 25 in kindergarten, 32, K to one to five and 33 in middle school. And again, where it's possible, we'll keep them three feet apart in the classroom. Where not, the, the rooms will have extra air purifiers. And, and again, again, the alternate is just not really a, a instructionally sound where we'd be opening classes with substitute teachers and um, paying for it, quite frankly. Because it just for example, if, if for example, we decided if I tried to open an extra class on every grade, that that's an expense of a, 250 to about $300,000 over the course of the year. And, and those would be substitute teachers and, and then spacing rooms become an issue as well. Uh, there might be at some point between now and the first day of school, some redistribution of students across a grade. So if we see that a particular class is pushing, you know, uh, is maybe we're not a little too crowded and we can alleviate that by moving a child, we may have to do that. We're not trying to, but it could happen. And, and I know parents, that's frustrating for students and it's frustrating for parents, but the goal here is to get the kids back. And if that means that we may have to move somebody, then that's just a decision we're gonna have to make. We're not, it's not what we're setting out to do, but it is possible also depending on what happens with enrollment over the next uh, week or so we start that. The other step that will be taken is random testing. Okay, 10% of unvaccinated students with consent, okay, will be tested bi-weekly. So parents this year, you technically do not have to give consent for your child to be COVID tested. I'm going to ask you to give that consent. Uh, I, I don't, I think it's extremely important that we have, you know, we, we test as many students as possible, you know, that, that are not vaccinated so that we can keep an eye on this. And if, you know, because some students do carry it, uh, well, some adults, some students carry it being asymptomatic. So I'm, I'm asking if you please would give that consent it would be greatly appreciated. And, and, you know, the testing went very well last year. We had no issues. I mean, the kids, truthfully, the kids that got tested, 99% of them were excited and volunteering to be tested. The, you know, the few students who really struggled with it, we did not force anyone. If a student became upset or, you know, really was uncomfortable, we just said, don't worry about it. We're not going to test you. And we'd speak to the parent about it. So, you know, if a student really is having an emotional issue with it, we are not going to force them. But again, you know, the, the reaction of the kids getting tested was actually somewhat entertaining last year because they all seemed to really enjoy it. Uh, and staying home, you know, if, if you're not feeling well, if your child's not feeling well, please just keep them home that day. Okay, now there will, there's no remote option if they stay home if they're not feeling well, but it's an absence. But 
you know, it, it's, you know, I said this in kindergarten yesterday, a few years back, you know, as a parent, we probably all did the same thing. You give a child some title in the morning and let's get them to school. And they're usually fine by the end of the day. We're just not in that situation anymore. So if your child's not feeling well, please make sure that you do keep them home. Okay, if there are positive cases in the school, okay, the quarantine, this is kind of a summary of the quarantine rules. Uh, elementary school where the kids aren't vaccinated, the whole class will quarantine for 10 days, okay? We would just flip to a remote instruction there. The teacher's home, the, the class is home, particularly in K-3 to where it's just self-contained. So it, it really is, it, it's an interruption because the children are home, but they'll be getting their live instruction from their teacher. In middle school, if your a middle school child is exposed and they're vaccinated without symptoms, they do not have to quarantine, okay? If they're unvaccinated and symptomatic or asymptomatic, and vaccinated, okay? Uh, well, actually, if they're unvaccinated, there should be a comma there. Sorry, if they're unvaccinated child, if they're a symptomatic child or asymptomatic and vaccinated, um, I messed that up completely, sorry. <laughs> uh, school and vaccinated symptomatic, there should be another comma, sorry about that. Then they have to stay home, okay? If, if, if we get to that point, we will share the information with you, okay? You'll be contacted, explain to you, listen, your child was exposed. They are vaccinated. They can come to school as long as they're feeling okay. They're not vaccinated. They can come to school. You know, if they're not, we'll explain it to you if we get there, okay? Um, and there are different scenarios as far as, uh, oh, there's no testing out. Parents have asked that, you know, if, if my unvaccinated child is, is not symptomatic, but they get a COVID test two days later. Can they come back to school? They are not allowed to do that, okay? Again, these are city health department rules. The, um, let me just see where I put that. If we do, if a middle school gets a little trickier when it comes to quarantining, okay? And there are certain rules with, you know, what, what, what if, for example, part of a class has to quarantine? The guidance right now is that if a, Teacher is in the if, a if let the half the teacher's class has to quarantine and half doesn't. The teacher delivers instruction in the building if the teacher can work in the building. Uh, the teacher delivers instruction in the building to those students, and the remainder of the students then are provided with asynchronous work. Okay, and there are check ins with the teachers. We just received guidance yesterday, principals did on an agreement between the city and the UFT, the teachers union on the rules governing how teachers are going to deliver instruction. If, for example, half a class is quarantined and half is not, to be very transparent, I, I've read it. I had a meeting on it yesterday. I still haven't fully processed it. Uh, so I need to, um, there's a, another webinar coming out for principals about that. So just understand there's gonna be some combination of asynchronous or synchronous meetings. If, if uh, like say half a class has to quarantine and I will, will share that information once I have complete clarity on it. Okay. Several parents have asked about, you know, because there's no um, remote remote option, they've asked about home instruction. There is a very limited home instruction program, and that program is there is geared towards students who have severe medical issues. At this link here, this link takes you to the DOE's uh, page on that, and it will it lists, you know, the the, the conditions that children may have that would qualify them for this program. It, so if you're interested, if your child has a health issue that you're concerned about, you can check and see if they, they would qualify and follow up at this link. The other option to be very transparent with everyone, if, if a parent is not comfortable and, and their child does not qualify for home instruction, the, the guidance is that parents should uh, homeschool their children. Okay, this is, and I know that sounds very harsh and I believe me, don't misunderstand. I don't wanna lose any children you know, off our register to homeschooling, but that is the, the only other option for parents who are not ready to send their children back to school. The link to register for homeschooling is there and the information you can follow up on that. I, I'm hoping that, you know, we have very few of any parents to take advantage of this because we really are looking forward to seeing all the kids back. I do know that, you know, coming back is, is causing parents some anxiety. Some parents, some of you are ready, ready to go, let's get them back. Um, and I think everybody's feeling that way, but even the ones that, there, there's still some that are a bit nervous. You know, we are obviously still in the middle of a pandemic. I feel confident that the health and safety protocols that we'll have in place will do everything, will do well to mitigate, you know, the, the risk that, that is out there. But there is a risk. You know, I can't look at parents and say there's no risk in returning to school in the middle of a pandemic. 
it, there is a risk. I mean, there is a chance that there could be COVID cases in the next year in school. God willing, there won't be. We're hoping that it doesn't happen. We'll do everything we can to prevent that. But, you know, we all have to understand we cannot completely eliminate this risk. And I think that, I know that, getting the children back in school five days a week it, it out, far outweighs that risk. Um, to give you an idea, and I do feel comfortable coming back. I spoke to a parent this morning who was explaining, I feel very comfortable with us all coming back. The, one of the things I base that on is our experience over the summer. For the summer program, we had probably about 500 kids in the building. I, I would say um, at some point in the program, even up to 600 students from, quite frankly, all over the city. Because the summer rising, as you know, the children were allowed to register anywhere they wanted. So we ran an academic program from 8.30 to 12.30, masking, social distancing, um, you know, children ate in the classroom, things like that. And then from 12.30 on, it was a camp-like program, and there was still social distancing in place, but I will tell you that the children were engaged playing uh, board games and, and sports outside, sports in the gym, uh, air hockey, foosball, pop a shot, you know, uh, games that, you know, they were close to one another. You know, distancing was not really possible if they were going to engage in these activities, and we did not have any spread in this building all summer. There were a couple of cases I and mean, maybe we had five cases over the summer but each one of those cases came from outside where i would be contacted by a parent or a staff member saying listen i was at my family party my brother tested positive i got to get tested tomorrow now i have it i got to stay home I, there was not a case that i know of in this building where a staff member or a student came in and it transmitted within the building so now, again, I'm not looking at anyone guaranteeing that can't happen, but based on my experience this summer, I, I do feel very comfortable coming back and can say that, you know, with, with confidence based on that experience that these health and safety protocols, they worked over the summer, they worked last year, you know, I know we had several closures during the regular school year, but again, the, the, there was no evidence of spread within the school, that was just because there were certain thresholds that once you hit them, the, the city automatically shut down the, the building, so um, I feel as comfortable and confident as I can about coming back. And quite frankly, I'm very excited about it. I, I, we all are. Uh, meals. Right now, that this is something that I'm working on. This is my my probably my biggest goal between now and the first day of school. And I'll get it figured out. There, there's some going to be some combination of children eating in the classroom and eating in the cafeteria. We have those round tables. We will not be putting six and seven students at a table facing each other. The guidance for eating in the cafeteria is to the extent possible, get all students facing one direction, keeping them three feet apart where you can. Uh, if you can't do that, making sure there's plenty of air purifiers. We are gonna do, um, I will do my due diligence for meals and, and making sure that we do it as safely as possible where we can use outdoor space, we will, you know, obviously weather permitting, but uh, that quite, I still have work to do on that. And the guidance with that has still been kind of rolled out to us this week. So I, I will be working on that and I'll have it straightened out by, by the first day of school. Uh, as I mentioned, instruction during quarantine, it'll vary a little bit. If there's a full class closure, there'll be synchronous instruction. A partial class closure will result in the combination of asynchronous instruction and an office hours setup where teachers will be checking in. I don't have much more information. I don't have detailed information on that. I, I, again, I have to get some more guidance on the memorandum of understanding that was signed by the UFT and the city and what exactly um, teachers will be expected to do and how they'll support students who are uh, in a partial quarantine or only partial part of the class is there. All right, uh, school hours. The school hours that they put out earlier, uh, the official school day is 8.30 to 2.50. We will be able to accommodate early drop-off at 7.45 a.m. Now, I wanna be very clear on this. Parents, I'm gonna ask if you don't need early drop-off, I'm really going to ask you not to use it. If you need it, we have it there for you. I know some of you got to get to work early, but it is 745. I can't do any earlier that, you know, there's just not staff to supervise the students that earlier than that. But I want to be honest that we may or may not be able to guarantee you that children will be socially distanced during early drop-off. Okay, children that come in, we've got to house them somewhere. That will be the cafeteria, some combination of the cafeteria and the gym. If there are too many students, you know, we can open the school and bring them in, but we may not be able to keep them three feet apart. So if that's not something you're comfortable with, you know, with that understanding, you may just want to make sure that you don't bring your child until, you know, 825, 830 on the dot. 
Um, so they're not housed in a in a large setting with with students um, from multiple classes, which which is what we're going to have to do if we're going to offer early drop off. We have no other way to do it. We will go back to all students entering through the schoolyard. Okay, you, it's been a while. We actually had to uh, we sat down and discussed it. This the APs and I actually could not remember how how we did entry back in 2019, but we were going to go back to. Uh, one one entry point. We're going to try it. it. It's worked, you know. Pr prior to COVID, it always worked. We're going to continue that. Uh, if if we see we have to adjust it, we will. But we're going to start that way. Dismissal will go back. Kind of pretty similar to what we've done in the past and even what we did last year. Uh, you can see it there. Just take a look at where your child's grade is. One thing I want to ask about um, entry, parents, if you don't mind, you know. It, when you're in and around the school, there's obviously no rule to wear a mask outside. I know some there's different levels of comfort as a courtesy. If you could try to wear a mask, it would be appreciated, but it, it, it is your decision. The only other thing I would say is at entry, if you could maybe just drop your child and go once they're in, because you know we're back to 1,100 children. It's not the 200, 250, 300 children school that we run for the last year. And as you may remember, it does get pretty crowded out there. So. You know, if you don't mind when you drop your child, just drop them and go. I know sometimes you like to stay and wave and watch them go, but it just does create a lot of congestion. And I think the the, the fewer opportunities for large groups of people gathered outside school, the, the better. So um, if you have a if you need something, or you need to come in the school, you are gonna have to go around to the front and sign in, show your ID, and then and then we'll we'll help you out there. Same thing with dismissal. You know, if you don't mind, just if you get your kids and to the extent you can go just so we can try to avoid as many large gatherings as possible. And, and it's not so much, I mean, I think historically you should know that, you know, we're more than happy to have you around. We enjoy seeing you outside, talking to you. But I, I just think the key here is we have to try to be a little bit cautious in the beginning, keep everyone safe and healthy to the extent we can. Uh, I should have, have put parking higher. So I'm just gonna mention it now, parking. Uh, it, somehow we managed to have parking this year, this past year seemed to be more challenging than it's been prior to that. And we had a third quarter of the kids in the building. So I, I don't know what's going to happen in, in a week, but folks, you know, we, I, I send out a few letters every year. We are very fortunate in this neighborhood. There's no alternate side parking. You've got probably, I think it's two, almost two miles of parking around Juniper. Please park away from the school and walk your child to the back. Okay, please. That double parking on 79th Street, it upsets the neighbors, it causes congestion. And the biggest thing it does, it, it really creates a safety issue for our students. Okay, it, it's, you know, parents get frustrated and they try to whip around somebody and there's someone in the street or there's a child in the crosswalk, crosswalks get blocked. Uh, you know, I, I'm gonna, and I've, you know, I, you know, every year I tell you this, I, I do speak to the 104, I ask for parking enforcement, and, and I'm going to continue to do that. And it's just to keep kids safe. So please, you know, if you get that first lane in, on 79th Street, some of you I know like to get there really early and make sure you get that right up against the school. That's great. If you're not able to do that, please park away. And that includes an inclement weather, probably even more so because if you add rain or snow to the mix and people trying to cross the street and cars, you know, kind of getting uh, congested, it just increases the, the danger. So please make sure that you park away from school and walk your child there. Uh, Penelope, do not park on the school side in Penelope. It's number one, it's a no parking zone, and that really messes things up because of the buses. And please don't park in front of the school because we will have, you know, this past year, we've only had a couple buses. Next year, we'll be back to our, I think, a full contingent of buses, and, and it does get crowded out there. And if there's a car there, the bus stops, it blocks the crosswalk, it backs up into the intersection. And again, it's just about student, family, and staff safety. Excuse me. Uh, marking periods, the dates are there. I don't have to read them to you. We're going to operate on trimesters again, as we've done in the past. Parent-teacher conference dates uh, are to be determined. We'll get that squared away, but we will not follow the city's dates as we've done in the past. But I can't give you the dates right now because I have to do a, a, a vote with the teachers that they can approve changing those dates. And then I have to apply to the uh, city to, to approve it as well, which it's, it's a formality. But so we'll be shooting for uh, like mid-December. Uh, mid to late March. And then um, I think the, th uh, I forget when the third one is, that one probably don't have to change because that's just like a one night deal. And all will be virtual this year. That's that's a city policy, not a school policy. So all parent teacher conferences will remain virtual this year. And we'll get more information out about that as soon as, as, soon as we have it. Uh, parking, like I just mentioned, we're all back. Please keep that in mind. School supplies, 
we did try to uh, pare down the school supply list this year by buying a lot of things that would be needed in the classroom. There is, we appreciate when supplies are sent in, you know, if you're able to send the supplies in, that's great, please do, but do not feel compelled, okay? No one's required to send supplies in, no student's gonna be penalized, grades are gonna be affected, anybody's gonna question them. You know, we've been through a lot. I know people are still, some people have had, you know, employment issues and still getting back to work, maybe still be out of the jobs and things like that. So if, if there's a concern about supplies, don't stress it, just don't send them in, it's not a big deal. Okay, I don't want to put any pressure on any parent to feel that way. And registration for new students, just if anyone were to ask you, we'll be doing that next week, September 9th and 10th, beginning at 8 a.m. If they have questions about that, they just call the main office or speak to Ms. Lenall. And, um, you know, that last piece is, you know, it speaks for itself. We have been through a tremendous amount in the last year and a half, okay? And I have seen the frustration and anxiety and, and in some cases, anger on parents' faces. And, you know, and I, and I share all those feelings. Believe me, I do. I think that, you know, we made it because we really did cooperate and work together. I know the last year I made some decisions people may not agree with and, you know, but we got through it. Okay. We, we, our goal was to keep the building running and get as many kids in a time as we can. And, and I feel like we did that. We have to just continue with that same attitude, that patient, flexible, positive attitude. The kids are going to feed off everything we do. Okay. I, we're going to, there's going to be some times this year where we're frustrated, where there's a closure or, or a positive case or, or something is difficult. And, um, you know, it just, there's nothing we can do about that. As the adults, we've got to stay positive, be patient, be flexible, and just focus on the fact that, you know, as we're meeting today, we're meeting understanding that we're opening on September 13th with all of our students. There's no one learning in a cohort. There's no two days a week, three days a week, we're coming back. So I think that's a big step, okay? And, and I think if we just continue to focus on that positive and, and the other little things that we have to maybe adjust and change here at school to make that work, those are inconveniences. And, and you know, I'm not crazy about them either, but the goal is to get the kids back in school five days a week, get them with our teachers and, and get them back in the routine and get them learning, you know, at, at a more consistent, uh, in a more consistent manner. So, and, and we're there, we're, we're going to achieve that goal. The, on a side note, something I should have put here, I know parents have asked about like social emotional concerns and kids adjusting back. We will spend, you know, that first week of school in particular, and then revisiting it throughout the, you know, the, in, in the subsequent weeks, a, a good amount of time on routines, welcoming the students back, talking to them, making sure they're feeling comfortable, uh, you, you know, addressing their social emotional needs. We did add a guidance counselor. So we now have two guidance counselors. One will deal specifically with elementary school. One will deal specifically with middle school. Another will be some crossover if a child needs help. None, neither of them would say that on, on the middle school guidance counselor or on the elementary school. But we did try to increase our guidance capacity to make sure that we can better, uh, better meet the students' needs. So um, that is all like the front-loaded information that I have right now. Uh, I'm going to pop to the q and I will email the I'll share the agenda out. We'll, we'll blast it out here uh, sometime at some point today. I'm going to, no, let me just jump to the Q&A see if I can see that. Okay. Let me just start at the top and I will answer. Will there be hot lunch? I, it'll be a combination of classrooms and lunch rooms to keep the kids spread out. And as of right now, there will be hot lunch uh, unless there's some change from school foods that gives different guidance. The instruction if there's only one child quarantining will be asynchronous with teacher check-ins at some point uh, throughout the week. How's the student come? Uh, that's what I just kind of said. If there is no, that it's asynchronous instruction if a single student has to quarantine. There is no live option for quarantine students. This is a good question. Well, they're all, I'm sorry, they're all good questions. This is a question that comes up a lot. I don't know if you rephrase that. If a class is quarantined, do siblings of a quarantine student in a different class or grade have to quarantine? No. The, there is no close contacts have to quarantine. Close contacts to, an, to a positive case. There is no close contact of a close contact. So if you have two siblings and one of them is their class has to quarantine, the other child has not been exposed unless you know, your sibling who has to quarantine starts showing symptoms or something along those lines. But no, they're, the only people that have to quarantine are either positive cases or direct close contacts. 
what will happen during lockdown drills where some classes have to squeeze in tight spaces. Uh, during drills, the guidance this past year during drills was that kids did not move. We did not squeeze everyone into a tight space to, to do lockdown drills. I don't I don't think, to my knowledge, that guidance has changed. So, if we, when we do our lockdown drills, unless I get new guidance, the students would just stay in their desk, you know, or stay at their desk. Lights would be turned off, doors would be locked, nobody would move, um, you know. And, and God forbid, obviously, if the event there was a real lockdown, the teachers would tell the students what to do. But you know, the only time social distancing would get thrown out the window completely is if there was a real emergency that we had to rely on. Excuse me, respond to. If you have supplies and would like to drop them off, you can bring them right to the main office, excuse me, the main lobby. Anytime we're here, oh, today's Friday, I'm sorry. We're, we're here the rest of the day until about three o'clock and then the building will reopen on the 9th and the 10th. Please keep in mind that we're closed Monday for Labor Day and then Tuesday and Wednesday for the Jewish holidays. So the building will reopen on the 9th and the 10th and we'll be open those days from like 7.30 to, to about three. Okay, but again, there's I don't want to feel pressure, but if you have them, you can feel free to drop. Bathrooms one at a time. Bathrooms are not going to necessarily be one at a time. We'll have people monitoring them. Um, but if they're individual stalls, students are masked. You know, the, the bathrooms are large enough that they can't accommodate more than one student. Classrooms are clean nightly. The custodians will continue with the deep cleaning they do every night with the spray. Um, and cl yeah, classroom windows will be open and, and things, uh, things like that. The, all the normal ventilation procedures will be in place that were uh, where windows cannot be open, which all our windows do. Uh, well, any classroom when the windows don't open has appropriate ventilation. They have the MERV filters and uh, the ventilation has been checked uh, ad nauseum. And then again, also there's multiple air purifiers in the classroom. Paperwork for regular immunization. Yes, it, it does get submitted to Ms. Colazzo. If you have any questions about the regular immunizations, you can contact Ms. either Ms. Agronsoni or Ms. Colazzo, who handles uh, immunizations directly. Ms. Agronsoni is here today and obviously Next week, Ms. Colazzo will be back in the office on the 9th. I don't know what percentage of teachers are fully vaccinated. We don't have that information. I don't even, the, I read in the paper this morning that the, the city is estimating that they say 63% of staff is the phrase they're using are vaccinated. Although they think it's higher because uh, they, they don't count vaccinations that were given outside the five boroughs. I think the U of T stated, if I'm, and I'm, there was an article in the paper this morning in Chalkbeat, I believe the number of the U of T estimated that 80% of their staff were vaccinated. All staff in the DOE as of right now are required to have their first shot by September 27th. As far as what happens if, you know, what, what's the, how's that enforced? That's still to be, that's still being worked out between the city and the union. Uh, there is, uh, I got to, find out about testing consent. Uh, the question is, do parents need to fill out testing consent if they did so last year? I'm sorry, that's something that's been coming up in my meetings. I didn't get complete clarity. My guess is yes, there's going to be a need to because I think they had to do it again for the summer. We'll get that information out to you uh, next week at some point. We have plenty of extra masks. We have more masks than we know what to do with. So yeah, masks are not, we have plenty of masks. We have plenty of hand sanitizer. I, we were inundated with cleaning supplies last year, PPE, we still have all that. So please, you know, send your child in with a mask, but if a child forgets it, don't mean a couple of kids that got to school last year, they were very upset because they forgot their mask. There's nothing to be upset about. We'll get them a mask. And if it breaks, gets dirty, we have them. So don't worry. Uh, let's see. Can we submit the consent letter with the supplies then drop that off early as well? If you mean the testing consent, you may actually know something I don't. If there's if someone has been on the website and there's an updated testing consent form out there, if you have it and want to submit it, that's uh, you could leave it with us. I, I I'm not I'm not 100 percent sure. If, if you have an updated one you found though, you can bring it in. If there's an issue, we still need it. We'll get back to you on that. Okay. You do not need to. My, my daughter's already registered for kindergarten. No, you do not need to re-register. As long as you've registered for kindergarten, you're good to go. We look forward to seeing your daughter on the 13th. Okay, so there's no re-registration. If you want to confirm something or you're you know nervous, just you can call the main office on the 9th and, and just confirm that your, your registration status. But if you've already got your confirmation and your kindergarten packet, you're good to go. Yes, there will be a breakfast program and that 
falls under the 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 feeding situation that I'm to, just to be very honest that's what I'm going to be working out over the next five six days well I mean it won't take you that long but I, I that is my number one thing to work on between now and, and the ninth is uh really the 13th but I want to get it knocked out earlier is, is feeding and I'll, and I'll get that worked out okay there there is um grab and go breakfast it will not be hot breakfast but there's grab and go breakfast like there's been in the past and I've got to work out the logistics of that but I will get it worked out we don't have guidance on field trips yet. There were some field trips for some, uh, the question is, are field trips back? There were some that came up in one of our principals meetings and, and it was one of those information is forthcoming. So if they do start, the city does start to approve field trips, we will, I'll be very honest with you, I'm gonna take a very cautious approach to that. If, if there's something that's shared that field trips are back, I may not rush headlong into it, but I will uh, you know, look at it and, and figure out I, the, the best way to move forward with it. I will probably operate a little conservatively on some things, at least in the beginning. I just would like to get us back and get us in routine. And, and if I can avoid unnecessary risks, that, that uh, I, I will do that. But you know, once, don't get me wrong, we enjoy doing field trips here. The kids love them. I just want to make sure we can do it as safely as possible. In what case would the whole school have to be closed? Will we all transferred remote? We understand there will be no snow days. Okay, good questions. There, there is right now that there's no um, threshold that I've seen for an entire school closure. They're going to focus more on classroom closures. Okay, I, 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 if that happened, we would switch to remote instruction. Okay, teachers will have their remote platform set up within the first couple weeks of school. I think the deadline that they, the city has given them is October 1st. Most of our teachers already have theirs established and we're going to spend time the first week or so of school in class, getting students comfortable with those platforms, helping the students learn how to log on so that they're as autonomous as possible if it does come to that. So we would switch to a remote platform. Snow days are a little different. I do know the city is, you know, for lack of a better word, canceled snow days. Uh, and some parents have brought concerns about that to me. You know, the, what we will do on snow days is there will be a, some level of remote instruction. However, I shared this, I think last year at one of the PTA meetings, it is not my intention to do anything too high stakes on a snow day. I don't wanna, you know, there will be parents if there's a snow day that have childcare issues or access issues, or, you know, they just, their children can't log in. I'm not gonna do anything where a child would be penalized for not logging in on a snow day. Okay, we'll have some level of, of live instruction, but again, we won't be giving tests and things like that or, or things that maybe the children would have to rely on to succeed the next day on a snow day. I have a few questions. School starts at 8.30 on the first day of school for all students except kindergarten. Kindergarten students start at nine on the first day and um, Everyone else starts at 8.30. So it's 8.30 for everyone except kindergarten. And then from the second day, from September 14th on, kindergarten students will start at 8.30. Early drop-off. Yes, let's. we'll start early drop-off. Um, well, really, if, if, if your children get, if, if you need early drop-off on the 13th, we'll be here. Would it be better to start the 14th? Yes, but if their parents have got to get to work and, you know, we'll have people here at 7.45 uh, to receive students if they get in early on the 13th, okay? Uh, as of right now, yes, the school is serving hot lunch. We just don't quite know the format yet. Last year, they served it in like, um, like TV dinner trays, which were uh, you know like tin trays with a, with a cardboard top on them, and then they were delivered to the classroom. The students were eating the room, so we're that that we're working those lunch logistics and breakfast logistics out still. But we will get them worked out. How often will school? Yeah, everything's clean nightly, you know, and then touch points will be clean throughout the day. Touch points by that, that, I mean, handles to doors and things of that nature. And the teachers have a lot of uh, uh, ample supply of wipes and things like that to wipe things down as necessary. How and when will the kids know the test scores they took back in March and June? I don't know. I, I apologize. I, I, we were discussing this yesterday. I haven't seen anything that says the scores are released. When they are released, that you can find them in your... Um, uh, schools account is it Alex? I always mix up the name. My schools or my students? My student. Yeah, they they are on my students once they're released. But 
They have not been released to us yet, and I really haven't gotten a timeline on that. As soon as we get that information, we'll make sure we share it with you. Well, the DOE, yes, any student that needs devices, we are, like last year, we'll, we'll be, uh, we'll have a we'll, pretty good supply of devices for children that need them. So we'll, we'll get those things out to students, you know, in the first uh, couple weeks of school as needed. We are, you know, we, we do have a pretty good supply. Our goal is, for, um, as I mentioned last year, is to go to a one-to-one -one model. I, I mentioned at one of the meetings, if you, um, we want to go to a one-to-one -one model starting in middle school where we can maybe get sixth, seventh, and eighth grade. Every child has a computer that they bring back and forth to school every day. And then students who need devices so they can access remote learning will have those here. Just like last year, we'll issue them out. And we have ordered more. The city is providing more. So we were able to, to my knowledge, any parent or student that needed a device last year, we were able to get one to them. And I don't see any reason we would be able to do that this year. Will there be after school? Good question. Maspa Town Hall will be running their normal program. Okay, starting. I don't think they're starting till the second week of school. If I'm not mistaken. Uh, I heard from Mr. Kearney, uh, who runs Maspa. I believe he said they're going to start. I think it's the second week of school. I'm not 100% sure, but if you have questions, you can contact them directly about that. If you don't have Maspa's number, I should have had that on here. I'm sorry. You can Google Maspa Town Hall. It comes up right away. And if not, you could always reach out to Ms. Agrisoni, she can get that for you. But yeah, they will be operating. If you're new to the school, Aspen Town Hall is a paid program. Well, in elementary school, it's a paid program. In essence, they rent our building after school and they just uh, book in with us. They take over for the children at, at dismissal and they're open here every day till I think 5.30 pick up, they, uh, maybe six, but I know for sure 5.30. So that is an option. In middle school, it's free. So any middle school student uh, is, is able to stay until 5.30 every day. They do homework help, arts and crafts, sports, you know, clubs and things like that. It's run by the organization is a community-based organization, Basket Town Hall, and it's staffed by generally like college students and, and high school students who are counselors and things like that. And then they have supervisors of their own that run, run the overall program. So we've had a good relationship with them over the years. So you should touch base with them if you're interested. Now, as far as the school run after school programs, you know, things like band and sports and clubs and uh, as we've done in the past once you those usually begin around for an extra help which i know is a big one and we are jess and i were just discussing that this morning our intention each year is really to kind of get through september and then by october 1st we start looking at what we can offer as far as after school programs go um we are it's really dependent on budget which as of right now the budget is pretty solid Okay, it's actually very solid. So the, the opportunity to run after school programs should be there. I don't have any specific guidance on if there's gonna be any restrictions on it or limitations on that right now. So I don't think there will be, and we'll get that information out to parents as soon as possible, but we will focus on running, you know, um, as much of our normal like club activities as we would, as well as uh, extra help programs and things of that nature. And the only limitations there are just uh, budget and staff as of right now. Will students who made the honor roll last marking period be recognized when they return to school? Um, I, I, we haven't really thought about that. They're, they're, um, uh, we can look at that. I haven't really considered. Um, we usually hang the side. When we do honor roll, generally, we there's no ceremony for honor roll each year. We just hang up the honor roll uh, on, on a reason in the, in the hallway each year. So I, we would just probably continue to do that for the last marking period. We're, we're hoping for sports teams. That is, um, we don't know, as you may have seen, PSAL, the high school at the sports league, they are requiring students to be vaccinated in, in order to participate. So that does, and I did get an email about the middle school soccer league that we participated in the past, that all participants must be vaccinated uh, and wear masks throughout all co competition. That just came out yesterday. So, um, I don't know about indoor sports. I'm not sure what the rules are yet on, say, basketball and things of that nature. But I, I would, in, you know, if you are, we haven't gotten clarity yet. But I do know that the one league that is being set up, they're requiring any student who wants to participate to be vaccinated. That would then limit participation potentially to students who are 12 and over. Someone did ask that question. What about students who aren't old enough? We didn't get an answer yet. But if, if any sports teams were able to have, we will. We are kind of still waiting some guidance on exactly what we can and can't do. 
yeah, Juniper Valley, we started using the park again last year. We will, there's no reason we wouldn't continue with that again this year. Uh, to the, the, that's a great resource and we'll take advantage of it uh, when we can. That's the device question. Any student that needs a device, we'll make sure that we get that, get it, get it to them. Is there going to be after school? I spoke about that. No, students do not need to bring in their own devices for class. They do not. Um, when I mentioned a one-to-one -one school, what a one-to-one -one school is, is a school where every child is issued a school device and they bring it back and forth from home and school every day. So our goal, one of the things we want to, sorry, it's a fly. One of the things we want to do is get, um, start that in the middle school. And I think that our inventory, we're still getting devices back from last year that were lent out. So, and Ms. DeMario has been in this week trying to get a handle on, you know, what's come back, what's, what we have to maybe get repaired or things like that and what exactly our inventory is, but we're in good shape. So, uh, but no, you do not need to send your children in with their own device. Will there be three feet of distance when they eat or will there be six feet in classrooms? No, there's the social distancing guidelines is three feet where possible. Six feet is no longer the, the rule vaccinated or not. So all social distancing will be three feet where possible. Again, if it's not possible, we will be putting extra air purifiers in classrooms. Um, and that, that's the guidance as far as social distancing goes. But there is no, no more six feet. As of right now, students have to wear masks inside and outside. Uh, I don't know about class pictures. I, uh, I'll talk to Ms. Kathy about that. We'll make sure we get that. If you have questions about class pictures, you can reach out, call the school on Tuesday, excuse me, excuse me, on Thursday, call Thursday or Friday, ask for Ms. Kathy, and she can, uh, she handles that. I, I'm not real sure about that, but she, she can help you out there. So again, class picture questions, call Thursday or Friday, ask for Ms. Kathy, or you could always email Ms. Agronsoni and she can make sure Ms. Kathy gets it. Band question, you know, will the band be back? To the extent we can, we're going to get those after school programs going. We, we do want that in place. Will you be collecting info on which 12 and older students are COVID vaccinated or will they need to only, or will students need to show proof only if needed? My understanding right now um, is that students will only need to show proof if needed. Uh, there is no mechanism in place at this time to collect COVID student COVID vaccination information. My understanding of vaccinated means fully vaccinated, um, you know, in, in the case of a quarantine situation, you know, again, staff have to have at least one shot by the 27th, but as it, the way I'm interpreting it right now, if there were a quarantine situation, fully vaccinated staff and students would be the ones that would be excused from a quarantine situation. If I get any other information, I will make sure I share it with you. Um, the food varies for lunch. There's cold sandwiches. There's generally salad options. There's wraps. There's hot hot lunch so there's the chick sometimes it's chicken like chicken legs sometimes it's chicken fingers there's pizza beef patties it's it's a variety you know it, it's we don't do, it, it varies each day there's usually a cold and hot option and and um i eat it quite often so i think it's pretty good um um i lost is that everything Band. Oh, sorry, I lost some here. Uh, class assignments. Yes, you, right now you only know class assignments. We, we don't put out teacher assignments until the first day of school. Quite frankly, the teacher assignments, uh, they honestly change a little bit throughout the summer. They're, I've had a couple of teachers contact me unexpectedly. They were taking, uh, say, maternity leaves or things like that. Teachers leave over the summer. So all students will find out who their teachers are. Kindergarten found out yesterday, but all, all the rest of the school every year they find out who their teachers are on the first day of school. And I think that's everything in the Q&A. Right. Mr. Gardy? Yep. Sorry, we had some questions in the chat. Um, just to confirm, Maspeth Town Hall actually starts on the 20th and their phone number was posted in the chat. Thank you, and Alex. We had a parent ask, um, will the students be picked up from their classroom during MassPIP? 
Will MassPIP be picking them up directly from their classes and taking them into the cafeteria, or how will that work? Uh, I, we haven't worked that out yet with MassPIP. Usually what they do is we go out for dismissal and the students who have MassPIP then gather in, um, in either the cafeteria or the gym. Uh, that's something we'll have to work out with them. But, you know, there will be, they will be mixed in mass fit, you know, so if that's a concern, in other words, you will have students from multiple classes after school in mass fit town hall. They're, they're operating under, you know, I guess, normal conditions. So the children will be housed, you know, they won't be in pods anymore. They won't be, say, just staying with class 301 in mass fit. There will be students from across classes after school if you opt to go into mass fit. Anything else, Alex? We did have a parent ask if, do the parents need to sign up for early drop-off? No, no, we're here. You know, we're here 745. Um, if, if you, you know, if you got to get to work and you got to bring your child in early, just, just, that's, that's fine. What I would say though, is before 745, there is nobody outside supervising them. So sometimes, you know, you might find the gate unlocked. You know, if you if you drop your child there in the schoolyard, you have to understand there will be nobody out there to supervise them. So please just keep that in mind. All right, I think I've gotten all the questions in the Q and A. Um, if there's something that you know you're still not clear on, you can feel free to reach out to. Uh, oh, someone just asked. Um, uh, real quick, will there be orientation to meet the teachers to go over the school year learning? Yeah, that's scheduled for the first. There's a first like open, it's virtual, but there, I guess we would normally call it open school night or curriculum night. That is scheduled for, it's on the city calendar for September 23rd. So, but again, that's a parent teacher conference thing that will be done virtually. But yeah, that will be taking place. And then um, vaccination, what about vaccination records, immunization, what we have to bring? Uh, yeah, you can. Well, can you bring them on September 13th? The first day of school gets a little hectic. So, you know, you might, if you want to send them in with your child, you can, but if you want to bring them in yourself, you might, you know, give us a day or two. You know, no one's going to be turned away day one. So if, you know, if, um, if you have stuff to drop off in the office, we're here the first day, but you can feel free to wait to the second or third day of school. Just let things settle down a bit here. Okay. I think that's everything in the Q&A. I'm going to stop sharing. Oh, sorry, Mr. Cardi. Just to confirm, students did not take class pictures last year. It was individual no, photos do, at all. We were unable to do class pictures last year. I don't, it's, I don't know about this year. I think we should be able to reinstate class pictures. I don't see any reason we shouldn't. But, you know, again, that's kind of one of those things that I mentioned about being flexible and patient. There, there are going to still be some things that we are not where some areas where we're not able to function as we normally would be. So it's just something we all kind of have to go into it with that mindset. And I, and I think the biggest thing we all need to focus on is that we're coming back. Uh, and, and that, that to me is, is, like I said, it's very exciting. Someone asked, do we have to buy anything? There's, there's a supply list on the websites, but again, they're not mandatory. Okay. If you can bring the supplies in, that's great. You know, but they're not mandatory at a minimum, try to come in with pen and notebook, something like that. Your teachers will let you know what you need. If there's any issue with supplies, let us know and we will take care of it. Okay, I think we're pretty good in an hour. That's not too bad. Um, I think I'm gonna go ahead and, and wrap up and conclude. I wanna just again, say thank you to everyone and um, just reiterate how excited we really all are. Uh, I, I'm, I'm noticing my face may not show it. There's still a lot going on here, a lot to do, so I apologize. But we are extremely excited to welcome everyone back and, and see students and families and things like that. I, I really, we're gonna do everything we can to make this a great year and a great return and, and, and support your students any, any way they, that they need it. So you know, please don't hesitate to reach out to your teacher, Ms. Agrisoni, the APs, myself, the office, whatever we can do to help you, we will do. And um, you know, we're just gonna do everything we can to stay safe, stay healthy and have a great, uh, a great, a great year. And we are going to see about a girls basketball team. I'm not sure about indoor sports yet, but if we can get it in, believe me, I'm a big basketball fan. So is Ms. Zeka. So she's not going to let this, uh, our basketball program, she's coming from our rival 102 too. But um, if we can get our basketball program back up and running, the Wolf Den will be uh, rocking again, hopefully soon. All right. So listen, thanks. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, thanks everyone. Have a great, uh, enjoy the rest of the summer. A few days left. If you're celebrating the Jewish holidays next week, 
Uh, please enjoy the holiday and have a great Labor Day. Thank you again for all your support. You guys have been fantastic. Um, you really have been tremendous the last year and a half, and, and, I, and I look forward to working with everyone again. All right. Uh, have a great weekend, and thank you for joining, and we're here if you have questions, okay? We might be tuning out a little bit the next few days. Just keep that in mind. So if you don't get a response right away over the weekend, we will get back to you, you know, by next week, okay? All right. Thanks, everyone. Take care now.